snow, the cold will make you hotter. It's okay. It's worth it. No, it's well, actually, not worth it. You're supposed to sweat out a fever. So oh, welcome okay. back to another episode of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. As per normal, Shelby was the first one to say something. Sorry. <laughs> And I'm assuming since my whole entire layout got jacked up, Kevin logged in. Yeah, Kevin. Perfect. Now I get to do a bunch of layout edits. Thank you, Biggs. But we're going to do that after a couple of announcements real quick. So for one, we did get to add kind of an unofficial sponsor onto our bio page. Um, our own Fallon and her sherbet collections so yeah we're having black friday sales this week every day is a different sale today is 20 percent off scarves and then all the way through sunday every day is a different sale there's a black friday sales page on my website if you click the link that'll give you all the sales for the rest of the week and uh, it'd be pretty cool if you guys got your Christmas gifts with me, if you're interested. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there. Everything is literally made with these hands. I made it all. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be awesome. Enjoy. Okay. Second, I did promise everyone a little bit of an announcement. How many of you have been sitting there just going like, okay, does anyone actually know what the fuck this is going on? Where the one knows. No one knows. I have zero clue, and I chose to not even try. <clears throat> well, the thing is, Biggs actually knows. So, Biggs, are you actually able, like, on enough to talk? I'm going to assume no. not. Yeah. And I'm just going to lecture him. Oh, he's getting the girls changed. I know that. But... Sorry, I'm like still trying to do that so starting in the new year we're actually going to be having a new player join the rhyme of the frostbaiting campaign Ooh. is it jordan it is not jordan i've already said that i just got to i want to know <laughs> you, no like i have the feeling derek would know if it was jordan yeah all right who wants to take a guess before I actually just give it away? Do I know them? Sort of. <clears throat> I know. Yes. Have I met them before in person? No. Okay, then I have no idea because I'm bad at names. So if I ever did meet this person vaguely, I will not know them. Is it a current subscriber? No. Hmm. Then I have no idea. Is it a man? No. Does it? Oh, it's another woman. It is another woman. Yes. Ooh. Get the ladies. Get the ladies up in here. I'm trying to think of interested ladies who play D and D. Is it Derek's girlfriend? It is not because once again, I feel like, I feel like Derek would know. Too. I yeah. mean, is it Alicia? It up behind his back. I don't know. Heather, it's you gonna start playing D&D &D behind my back? She flicked me off, so I'm guessing no. Probably a safe assumption. God damn it. I don't know what the yeah, hell is it happened, but... At least me dad. Hold on. I, I'm literally trying to do something right now, and it just screwed up everything. And I somehow blame Kevin. Kevin! Kevin! What are you doing? You know what he's doing. He's pooping. He's pooping. Why are, you, why are you fucking up so hard, bruh? Send those poop vibes over here. Do you have to poop or something, Shelves? I always have to poop and I never can. Fucking so, say. It's, it's called cool. constipated IBS. Getting old, guys. It happens fast. I mean, it's hard. True. It happens fast and hard. <laughs> All right, so finally got to switch to the screen. So now everyone is actually in the right spots again. Woo! Yeah, it just took forever. So unless the plan changes, yes, we will be having Kevin's wife joining us on Rhyme of the Frostmaiden Ooh. every other week. Please! <laughs> See, you kind of know her. 
I do know her. I said that. First lap dance I ever gave. Aww. That'll be so fun. I like how that's like yep. her fondest memory of Alicia. It's like, that's my first lap dance. And I'm yep. just like, boobs. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, so was Derek. So. All right. Yeah. So why don't we take, I, that's all the announcements I have. Uh, Fallon, you got to talk about your sales. Yep. Uh, anyone else have anything else they're going on? Everyone ready for Thanksgiving? I yeah. am bearded to be here. Were those, was that English? Yes. I did. Was. Okay. Say it better. Yeah. Green bean casserole and candied yams to make. I have a bottle of Bailey's. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and I'm not staring at Adam. Because he's not going to be here. Wow. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? I'm going to my in-laws so that we can... Oh, okay. That's nice. That's nice. I'm married. I gotta, is, it, I, I, is it nice? You got to split time. I have to split time. Yeah. It's fair. My parents, my parents are coming with me and Kyle over to Kyle's parents' house for Thanksgiving. So we'll all be there together. You so be no fighting. <laughs> Good. I would be, there would be fighting. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me see. Let's do a recap with Arabelle. We're fucked. We're so fucked. You're so fucked. To village recap why we're fucked. Um, we met Bradley. And those of you who know, you know. Bradley. I have to save Bradley. Um, Bradley fucked us over. You know. Even though my character doesn't know Bradley, in a past life, literally, he knew Bradley. And therefore, he has to save Bradley for some unknown subconscious reason. While that goes down, uh, we tried to use Bradley. He was going to bring the enemy leader to us. And we are going to wreck him. Well, he showed up, and we wrecked him. And then it turned out that it wasn't really him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And seeing as Bradley is being controlled by an almighty, almost godlike deity. Is a god. It's literally a god. Um, I have to assume he knew that, which means we were just played pretty hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we just wrecked a guy who had the same stats, technically, as the big boss. Mm -hmm. But the difference being, obviously, it wasn't him. So we just wasted spell slots on things mm -hmm. on someone who was not the big boss. And I was pooping during this episode. That's correct. Yeah. You can hear Kevin kind of in the background. Let's go. I'm just gonna do us oh. all solid and mute him. Yeah, I would. Oh, I did. But now it's, I left. Damn it. All right, there we go. Sorry for the technical issues. All right. So you guys come back. You are still in the midst. You have the Dugar in front of Fallon that is still there. God damn it. It is Oramek's turn. I rolled a one. Oh, fuck. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. That turn order. So, I guess I will be Oramek for this turn? Mm hmm I was Zylena two weeks ago. Why the hell not? Mm-hmm. All right. So, oh, he does get advantage on an initiative. That's nice. Okay. So, Oramek now noticing that this illusion has faded off. It's kind of taken back. But with that, he sees that the other Duogar is still happy and healthy. So he gets up and runs over here. And since now but he is between Fallon and Ormek. Flanking. Flanking. Yeah. And he is going to strike with the Berserker Great Axe. N not great the first attack so as he swings down the first one he's going to 
jump off to the side and avoid it, but on the second time. So like Wait, he has advantage though, because he's flanking. Yeah, I know. I rolled with advantage, it's just not coming up, so I'm just kinda taking this. Because he's still gonna get hit. There we go. There you go. So he is gonna take the thirteen damage. I gotta let someone else do it, something, Aramil. Say what? I have to let somebody else do something. Like, remember things? Yeah. Oh, I will. Yeah. Also, so, because if... Ormic can do it all in one turn, but he is going to end his turn right now. Wait. If this was Kevin, he would definitely do his extra attack. A hundred percent. Correct. Mm -hmm. But he's not. Son of a bitch. That's rude. It's because he's not here. Yeah. Kevin, hurry your ass up! He's <laughs> yeah, fucking your character up! Alright, so with that then, I'm going two-handed on the long sword. Okay. I said two-handed before I did it. I know, I, I was listening. I know, I had to make sure, though, because I saw those damage differences. I was like, I said it. I said it. <laughs> I said a thing, and I know I said it. Said it. All right. All so right. with the 18, it is going to strike against Iduagar, and you will do the 14 damage. Yes. And then I will do my second attack. No, you won't. What? Why not? Because he's already dead. Oh. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Just savagely eviscerating a dead body at this point. <clears throat> All right. Well, the 26 is going to hit. And you're going to definitely stab into the skin. As you mm -hmm. see the form shrink down from its enlarged state. Yeah. You feel that your sword almost is getting pinched in between the skin as his skin starts to shrink closer together. Yes. Make a strength check to pull out your sword. Okay. Nice. You you pull it out like it's fucking Excalibur. <laughs> That's Link, but we'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <clears throat> so with that, you guys have successfully killed off these two ago Duogar before they were able to make enough noise to alert anybody else around. Thank God. I'm gonna walk over to this bro and see if there's anything on his person. Alright. So, <laughs> so as you are rummaging through his pockets, you find two silver a note saying you were to wear this amulet for the duration of the next week. You are to mm. prepare to be Zordarok's bodyguard. Um, I'm going to say... You, again. you guys talked at the same time again. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, is it signed by anybody? It, it's signed by Zodorok. Hmm. Okay, I <clears throat> showed the note to them. Well, in that case, uh, I think we should take that amulet and wear it. Will it work, though? One way to find out. Uh, I take the amulet off of his body and I put it on. As you go to put it around your neck, I want you to roll an arcana check. Mm. <clears throat> uh, 14. So, as you put it around your neck, you feel the slight bit of magic start to pulse around your neck. But it doesn't seem to coat you or put on this misty illusion around you that you are Zord Rock. Yeah, I figured. Figured it wasn't going to work. 
But what you do see now is that this amulet, upon closer inspection, does have the ability to disguise oneself. Once a week, it can cast the disguise self spell. Hell. Does Make, it have a name? It, it's a homebrew item. We'll worry about that later. Cool. Okay. I'm just going to write that down. Yeah. Um, Remind me of it later. <laughs> amulet. Ormic, welcome. He not fully lit. Oh, he's still muted. Hold on. I got to go back there and do that. I heard him. He's muted, so you couldn't. But now he's unmuted. How did you mute me? I can force mute. It's one of my it force powers. Interesting. Because it didn't say I was on my end. No, I, I, no I can mute you through my screen because I was hearing your kids. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, they got mad at me. I didn't double attack for you. Oh. I know. Horrible friend. Son of a bitch. Yep. All right. So you all are in here and you just killed those two Duogar and discovered the amulet of disguise self. All of a sudden, I want all three of you, or McFallon and Aramil, I need you to roll a perception check. Oh, fuck. Nailed it. Uh, 17. Perception. 14. <clears throat> All right. Sorry, every now and again I'm hearing like somebody's fan come on, like a vacuum or something, and it's throwing me off. Mm. All right. It's not me. Ormick, you're hearing hammers going off in the distant background. You are assuming that it's just the people working on the forge. Okay. Uh, Aramil, you rolled 14, Fallon 17? Yeah. Uh -huh. You hear, from the direction that you guys came down the steps, you are going to hear steps coming down. No. Fallon, you're hearing that it's slightly or heavy steps. Mm -hmm. Like they're wearing a heavier armor. Let's hide. And then I tuck behind this. Yeah, same, bro. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to hide on that side or the other side. Well, <clears> technically, <throat> Ormic doesn't know because they didn't even tell. They just walked away. That is true. Oh my God. I'm just like, hey, Ormic, get over here. <laughs> Come on, let's role play um, a little bit. Ormic, there's yeah. someone coming down the stairs. Oh. Come on. Okay. At the so I guess. at the bottom of the steps, Zelina, you open up to this hallway. Oh. The smell of freshly dead bodies brightens up your day. Is that right? And you notice that the doorway has been opened. You can proceed to move forward. You can sit right oh, here. I'm going to go right around here. Oh, some dead bodies. Do you say that out loud to them? Like, are you saying as character? Yep. I'm going to poke around and be like, Zylina? Hello? Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank Zylina, God. is that you? <laughs> are you all around that corner? We're about to get our asses slapped. Bye. Who and where can I sign up? No, not in the good way. In the we're gonna die way. Oh, shit. That's yeah. when Airmel brings out his little clipboard and just says, "Well, you sign up right here." Okay, I have a question, DM. Yeah. Right before we ended last week, mm -hmm. we heard the guy say that the dragon is self fixable right like the dragon can just fix itself you did hear that okay i didn't write it down but i remembered that we heard that so i'm kudos. gonna write it down. kudos okay kudos for hearing half but you know what 
that's half the battle. Oh God! Wait, there's more to that sentence. <laughs> I thought we heard that the forge makes it self repairable. Got it. The forge, yeah, the forge is self sufficient and like can do it everything by itself. Correct. Exactly. So if the dragon comes back, it can just fix itself. So we basically need to like blow this building up. Yeah. I well, mean, that's up to you. Uh, if you guys want, I can try to heal us all before we move any further. That'd be awesome. I'm okay for now, actually. I would love some of that. <laughs> Before you cast that, I would like Derek, mm -hmm. DM to DM, uh -huh. roll a D100. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 99. Wow. Um, what a... That 99 problems, but the dice aren't one. That's right. Well, they are going to make everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so then what I want you guys to do. Okay. Off in the distance, you start to hear everyone. Forge dies down a little bit. You start to hear people, oh, thank God it's time to go to sleep. Oh. Leaving the, the chambers. Oh no. No, you, you, you don't seem to hear anybody actually coming this direction. Okay, good. <laughs> Because like, oh, only the lords are allowed in the higher areas of the castle. Lords and their direct servants. Mm -hmm. All of them are going to be sleeping down here in their chambers. But. If you want to. And everybody says yes to this. I will give you all a long rest, no checks, no nothing. Yes. Oh, man. Yep. I feel like that's a duh. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. But yes, sorry, you're looking for the answer, yes. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%, if we're safe. That's unanimous, let's go. Should I hit the button? As you go to move forward to scout ahead and see where these do are coming from you feel your spear start to emanate a dark presence uh -huh. oh no so we're not taking a long rest not yet apparently god damn as you pull it out a dark mist starts to wrap around all four of you and pulls you into a pocket dimension Is it a pocket full of sunshine? <laughs> no, death. 100% death. <laughs> As the fog starts to fade from your eyes, you notice that none of the surroundings look similar. Skulls and bones lay everywhere. A small right. drip can always be heard in the background, never knowing where it's really coming from. And there's a slight odor that you feel like you've smelled before, but you just can't place it. Does it smell like Istric red penis? <laughs> After defeating a dragon and not showering, yes. Damn. Is it death? It's probably death. It's pretty close. Lit. But because of this area, Aramil, you're going to hear mm -hmm. the voice come from it. Okay. Consider this a gift. And it just fades out of your mind. Wait, is it the spooky guy? The spooky spear guy's helping us? I know I haven't used the spear in a while, so I'm, uh, I'll catch you guys up. It is a goddess. The spooky spear lady's helping us? <laughs> a lady? I for sure thought it was a dude. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. No, the spear of Kieran Sully. <laughs> no. Here we are, just assuming gender. Like, how? Wow. Yeah, right. We I do mean, a really great job with that guy. First twenty episodes of the stream was about that. Yeah. But now you may all long rest. All I gotta say is you do care about us. 
So is it, does time work the same? So like when we come back, will it be eight hours here? You're gonna have to see when you go back. If you can figure That's out how to go back. Can check to me. I mean, cause if they're all sleeping, then we might be able to get in, fuck that forge up, and then just fucking hightail it out of there. I am fully charged with a ton of curses and bestow curses and um, thunder waves, so I'm ready to rock. Ooh, all right, yeah. so I, 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 I got all. I have all the actions left on my uh, on my spear now too. My, right. my, my that's per day. That's not per long rest. Ah, right. fuck. Okay, I think I only used one of them. I think I only. I think I just used the. You did the extra 2d6 of damage. Yeah, the extra 2d6 damage. Yeah, I wrote it down. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. After resting, you awaken. You feel like the stench of this place has seeped into your clothing. Ugh. Ooh, wait a minute. What do you guys want to do? Uh, try to get the fuck out. Huh. See if you like rub it. Maybe it's like a like a genie in the bottle situation. If we're here for a while, I would just like to go like scorched earth with the uh, with prestidigitation because it allows me to instantaneously clean or soil an object no larger than one cubic foot. So I'm just gonna walk around and just like smelling all of our clothes, be like, oh, that's disgusting, and then just start like prestige, 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 prestige. <laughs> So as you're going around, you, you walk up to Fallon, use prestidigitation, you see the grime come off of her. You know, the scent, she smells more like she was from the woods. Who just rolled something? I didn't. I posted the spell. Oh, no, I, I know it does that. I know. It's for the sake of the audience. I, you're welcome, audience. They don't see it. Ah, well then. Sorry, audience. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're uninformed. After cleaning up Fallon, you walk over to Ormic, and you put your your hand on his leather, and you cast it again, making the grime come off of him. But as you turn around, you see that Fallon is just as dirty as when you before you cast the spell on her. Oh. And without even lifting your hand, you go back to Ormic, and he is back to being as well. Something yeah. about this land, this space is keeping you dirty. Not a good turn. Um. So I just, after our long rest, I just grab the spear and I just look at it and I say, uh, can, can we go now? Yeah. <laughs> As you channel up your magic, Aramil, I need you to perform a song that will please the spear. Huh. Well, spear, I appreciate all you've done for us. And I uh, I want you to know I'm not going to get rid of you. I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> and then I hold the spear and start doing a sweet... I literally spear it into the ground of this place and start doing a sweet pole dance with it. Just like, never going to give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and leave you. So as he closes his eyes, as he's grinding <laughs> against this planted spear, he doesn't notice, but the smoke comes back up and around. So as you all start to get back in your vision, the only thing you're seeing is Aramil grinding up against his spear in the middle of a hallway. <laughs> I mix it up and I go, because like... you got like, right, yeah, and he took you it all the way around, home. You see Callan, like, <clears throat> what the fuck is that? And I just pull the spear back out of the ground and go like, that's how you talk to a lady. You don't talk to me like that. That's because uh, our thing is more spontaneous and fiery. Fallon, I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. Oh, God. Is she rolling whether or not she's offended? I am offended, I can tell you that right now. Huh. Well, I rolled a four. All right. (laughs) Very offended. I'm super offended. (laughs) Super offended. 
flow. All right. I am now giving you the silent treatment. You are now doing a little bit more than a silent treatment. As you are coming out of this confused state looking at him, you find that you cannot move anymore. You cannot talk. You've retreated into your own mind and have become paralyzed. Oh, fuck. Um. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to him. You can't. You are paralyzed. I'm paralyzed? I thought he was paralyzed. No, you no. are paralyzed, cannot talk. Or. What the fuck? Yup. I'm so irritated. <laughs> So, so wait, have I seduced the goddess in the point where now Fallon's jealousy is making her suffer? No. Okay. I mean, I'm just going to squash that one right away so he doesn't try to, like, run with that. <laughs> roll it. Roll with it. I seduced the goddess. Oh, God. Well, nope. I'll just feel here. Fallon is paying the price for something she decided four or five episodes ago. Oh. Oh. Wait. <clears throat> I think you give a thing that happened like a really long time ago? Nope. Oh, is it God. the tentacles? It is can not use, the tentacles. Can I use my magic awareness to see if I can figure out what it is? Four or five. Is that an action like you just sense magic? Yeah, as an action, you can open your awareness to the presence of any concentrated. Oh, wait, is it the shrine? Is it the shrine that I touched? It is not the shrine oh. that you touched. And Ormic, you can use that if that's what you want to do. I, okay, I just wasn't sure if it was concentrated magic. That was my fear. Technically, okay. you can say that, and I'll just tell you if it is. Um, uh, well, is it concentrated <clears throat> magic? <laughs> Adam, I would like to do an Arcana check on Fallon to figure out what's going on with her. Go ahead and roll. Oh, oh, is it the necklace with the rune on it? She's like, I'm not going to tell you, <laughs> but no. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the fuck it is. I can't remember if it's a thing that I decided or if it's a thing that I accidentally did that I forgot about that most likely you forgot about it because it okay, seemed cool. like a very insignificant task have we picked up anything like that we like cursed that we were just like deal with that later and then oh, just like, i mean like there's a necklace with a rune on it but he well, just said it was that and and you and remember they can't hear you talking you are in your own mind Um, does my 14 find anything? As you go to... You reach out with your mind to try to sense any magic, and you feel the life force that is Fallon, because she is a magical creature. Right. But you don't sense that magic is what's holding her back. Hmm. Definitely not something I wrote down, then. I'll I'll wait for all your hate mail later. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to remove curse. All I have is bestow curse. So can't think of what that would be. If only you had a cleric that actually cough, prepared cough. a spell for that. Cough cough. Someone hit me in the face. Cough cough. <laughs> she can't cough. She's so. Fallon. All right, Shelbs. I'm going to give you a warning. Since I sent you that message and you actually saw what it said, you you can't tell them stuff like that. That's using outside knowledge. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's immersive. We got to keep it immersive. To Go. be fair, I also was not listening at that time. 
Oh, that's fine. We were actually just pointing the fact that you're the cleric and don't have anything to get rid of cur curses. <laughs> so, Aramil, you go to shake Fallon, correct? Yes. yes. Do you say anything as you're shaking her? Wake up! <laughs> the poor man said nothing. Fallon, you feel every movement that they are using. You feel that they are shaking you. You know what is going on. You just cannot react to it. By this point, four minutes have passed since Fallon initially became paralyzed. <clears throat> hmm. What can we do? She did technically tell you how to do this, guys. I know, but I'm trying to be immersive. I have to figure out how I can come to that conclusion on my own. Again, I wasn't listening. I feel like I've said this before. When in doubt. Black of her? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the thing, cartoonish style, where someone is like, you know, frozen or freaking out, and I'm gonna just like, like, slap her, like, hey, hey, <laughs> snap out of it, yeah, yeah. snap out of it. Please do an unarmed strike. Okay. Was it while we were? Home? Yeah, we've been in the castle for like two for a hot minute. It had to have been while we were in here. Alright. There's my there's my swing to hit. Oh, wait. No, you are correct. No, you're fine, I got it. Okay, good. So, Fallon, you feel the red hot pain of Aramel's hand slapping across your face. The sure force of it awakens your senses and you are back in control of your own body. That sucked. You all right? I guess. You, uh... No idea what that was from. Hmm. Well, when we get to a safer point, we'll have to figure out what's going on there. We should figure out what we're doing next. Oh! I think I know what it is. <laughs> I remember what happened when I picked the, that thing up. So, your team is back to normal. You all have full health, because I'm not going to take that damage away from Shelbs. Right. I mean, you can. It's, it was, what was it, like two damage? Five. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, five damage. <laughs> <laughs> if it was two, it's fine. But five, oh, man. All right. <clears throat> All right, I say we start a scooting down the hallway and seeing if we can... Uh... Airmail, hold. I am. Roll. I, I want you to roll a perception check here. Okay. Oh. Everything sounds good. Can I walk up behind him? No, can I? All right. Oh, I see something. I'm going to stealthily sneak out here and take a peek. I see guards. Roll for stealth. Okay. Oh, boy. As you start to approach these Duogar, you miss you misguide like how much depth there is and miss a step. I want you to roll an athletic check for me. Okay. At least that went well. Uh, you remember now? Yeah. Eh. All right. 
So luckily what you're able to do is brace yourself up against the stone ways across. You throw out your hands and catch yourself. Roll another perception check for me. Okay. Nice. Perfect. You hear the sound of loud snoring. <gasps> like these duogar are supposed to be awake. You look further in to roughly about right here. And don't approach anymore. Go back. back. I thought when you said look further in. No, I'm saying you're looking further in. No. Okay. As you look further in, you're seeing that these guards have set down their crossbows. Uh And they're all kind of just leaning back and sleeping. Small fire is burning in between them all. But the embers are slowly starting to go out. I think we can take advantage of that and just keep moving. We'd all have to, I'm sure, successfully stealth past them. <clears throat> or, not or, do even stealth. Can, or do you mean we can keep moving like this? Walking way. through the hallway, I think, is fine. Alright, so we got two rooms here. Where the fuck did my guy go? Oh, there he is. He just, like, disappeared off screen for a sec. It was weird. That's pretty weird. I'm going to peek or into this stop. room over here. I did. Oh, I guess I'm not going to peek in that room over there. No. Ormic, I need you to roll for stealth. And if you succeed a 16, a perception check. Oh, boy. No pressure. Lots of rolls tonight, guys. Lots of rolls. Nope. Jesus. As you start to walk around the corner, you cling your battle axe against the corner right here just so everyone can see what's going on they did an awful job locking off all these yeah yeah they only blocked the actual door part (laughs) i yeah i i'm not even gonna argue with this one yeah right i was like i was like i feel like i shouldn't be seeing in here but i'm gonna you know so everyone i want you to stop where you're at pretend we can't Hold on one second. Oh, you gonna fix it? No. Okay. Damn. Well, if that was me competing against somebody, I just lost. Yep. (laughs) Ormic, you hear people start to get out of bed. Kind of grumbling, like it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you hear a kid screaming, and you just don't really want to (laughs) go. I can relate. Um... I'm gonna turn around because obviously I'm in. So I exit. I'm like, I like try and turn around and go like, shh, like signal to like the group of the party. Like, and then, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna wait and see if anybody decides to come out. As you wait, the group of Duogar all exit their rooms. <laughs> War picks at the ready. I knew I should have backed up. Who goes there? You see none of them are running towards any type of alarm. Some of them are scared. Hmm. But with that, it will be time to uh, roll for initiative. I rolled a 19. Ooh, that's a good roll. All right. Uh Fallon and Ormek, I need your dexterity modifiers. Plus four. Modifiers? Yeah. Well, no, she's Fallon's gonna be a, either a ten or an eleven. Yeah. To be at plus zero. Yeah, plus four. I'm so. a ten. My dex is ten, but I'm I don't have any like pluses. Yeah. Right. And my dex is eighteen. 
So then, Oramic, your turn is first. All right. Well, probably undermining this whole thing. I am not going to enter a rage this turn, but I'm going to run forward. Um, we're just going to go... I don't want to do this. I'll go right here to this guy. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and do the two attacks. All right, go ahead. Should be wrong. I feel like maybe we should have had a conversation. So I feel like, yeah, I should have backed up. I feel like we should have had a conversation before. Are you yeah. enraged, Ormic? Oh, no, I'm sorry. My uh, Beyond 20 is just not disabled. So don't do that extra two damage. Oh, I'm not. Still, still 27 damage, so damn. Yeah, as you swing your axe down, tell me how you did this. Oh, sweet. Uh, I don't even give this guy, like, a chance to, like, react besides just being grumpy before I, uh, we're gonna take one forward slash just right through his chest, and then as I back up, I, like, I don't know, let's say I take his left arm, like, right off of him. Falls over from, you know, sheer blood loss. <laughs> okay. So I found out the metal noise that I'm getting is actually from Kevin. Yep. Like, I sound like metal, or you're hearing fan? When you're talking, it sounds like a fan. Weird. Yeah, weird. I hear it, like, too. I have, like, nothing going. It's weird. And is something metal around the mic that could be echoing? Maybe. Or could it be because I'm in the room? Like, the because I'm in a different corner. I'm trying to turn my mic sensitivity down. That's good. Fallon. Um, can I see that they're scared and not attacking us? You can see the two of them are scared. The ones on the right look pretty young. Like maybe they were just conscripted into this Duogar battle. And they're still kind of afraid of having to fight to the death. I appreciate that you actually checked that though, because Ormic just said, no, nah, I'm going to cut this bitch. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to play to Ormic style. So, not so much that they are on our side, just that they're young and scared. Correct. I'm going to attack that guy right there. With the first level chromatic. Alright. 24 to hit. Damn. Is that with your plus two from the staff? Nope. <laughs> so. 26. 26. Damn. Yeah, you know, I thought my axe was good. <laughs> And then that's 11 plus 2, so 13 damage. Very nice. So he's going to get just come out of this room, kind of look angry, get his pick up, not even get the chance to enlarge yet, and then he's going to get blasted by this gigantic ball of electrical energy. He gets singed, he still feels like, a, you see he's shaking a little bit from having the electricity still going through him, but he is still standing up. Okay. That's all I can do. Uh, that Duogar was actually already dead. So next up is Mr. Aramil. I step forward and realizing that Fallon was looking pretty hesitant around the room, I take a peek around and notice the uh, the scared two Duogar. And in bardly, godly fashion, I enter the room and say, guys... None of us has to fight. What do you say to laying down the arms? Having a chat. So are you using your action to try to persuade them? Doesn't have to be an action, does it? If you're trying to persuade them, talking isn't. But if you're really trying to per like 
persuade them to like stop. All right. Well, yeah, I guess I am. I'm trying to persuade them to lay down their arms. We don't have to fight. Soul situation is pretty crazy. So as you look, you see the two young Duogars kind of look back and forth at each other like, is it all right if we stop? Will there be a punishment if, you know, they get killed and they don't do anything? Like if you die and the other Duogar notice that they're not trying. The other two Duogar, one singed by lightning, has no hesitation in his eyes and is ready to kill you. Hmm. Okay. The third, the fourth Duogar standing in the direct middle mm -hmm. kind of studies that you just said that. But he looks inquisitive. So go uh, ahead and roll persuasion. for perception on him. Yeah, not pers persuasion. You're right. Thank you. You see him take his war pick and smash it straight into the ground by his feet. And he just goes back into his room. Nice. <clears throat> what about those other two? I got a plan for them. Okay. Alright, well, with that, I guess uh, my bonus action... I'll use... No, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I will be back. Alright. So the two small young Duogar look at each other. And instead of choosing to lay down their weapons or run, they turn invisible. If only I could actually click everything tonight, that'd be great. And fade from sight. Zaylina. Because you're not paying attention. Actually, I was paying attention. I was looking through my spells so to see like what I could do from a distance. Cause I'm also just trying to play the cleric more. But a lot of that's healing, and we just the long rest when we're healing it. Mm -hmm. Just play to who you are. You don't have to play to being a certain class or race. It's Played who your character would be. Right. <laughs> what would your character do, right? She it's would like jump Jester, him and try Jester to sleep with him. And... Jester is a cleric and she never heals. That is true. Ah, uh, Laura Bailey. Uh, such a bae. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna look at this bitch over here. And we're just gonna toll the dead then. Yeah. Alright, go ahead. Alright, wisdom save. He failed the save, taking three necrotic damage. So he kind of hears the ringing go off in his ears, and he just takes one ear, kind of flicks his ear, and moves on. And then the next one. The Stuogar looks around the room, notices that everyone else is either dead or gone. And he tries to turn invisible to escape. Oh. 
Ormic. So you said tries. Correct. Okay. So, uh, realizing that the rest of my party, and not knowing why, uh, like, I thought I had to play Ormic here, not knowing why they're trying to uh, stop them, uh, can I step over and use my great axe, not hit, but intimidate them to stop? Like, I say, like, like uh, I'll say, one of it, I don't think so, or just disappear. Roll for intimidation. Wow. He thinks you're oh. as intimidating as a rabbit's butt. It comes off like, I don't think so. He just pushes your axe out of the way. No, the intimidation <laughs> was your action. Oh, you, I can o- you can only attack. second attack if you attacked. Okay. There's reactions in combat. It doesn't make sense. Hmm? But okay. What'd you say? No, I, was, I was trying to read my actions in combat, and that's just like, wait a minute, like I can still. No, okay. No. So no. attacks per action. Uh, then that's better. Fallon. Thank you. Um. I'm just going to attack that bro again. Um. Um. (coughs) I'm going to shocking grasp him. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 22 hit. You know that's going to hit. Actually, sorry, 22 hit. (laughs) You know that's going to hit. And then that's 10 points of damage. How are you going to do this? Um, I just take my hand to his throat and I just fucking like burn his throat out (laughs) with lightning. You just hold on to it a little bit long. It starts to arc between your fingers and start to singe everything it touches. Like, oops. Do me a solid. Just say like how energetic Fallon does it. It's just like, oops, my bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So with that, you guys are in the main dormitory for the Duogar. What are you gonna do? I'm going to search these rooms that no one went back into. (laughs) Are you sure? Yeah. Isn't there someone, like, right there? He's the guy that didn't want to fight, though. Yeah. So we'll leave him alone. Actually, specifically, I'd rather... I'd like to search rooms of people who died, basically. He doesn't want to loot the body. He wants to loot your rooms. Yeah. Like, they got in their bedroom. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Sorry, I had to. Uh... Yep, I saw that. Yeah, I had to moderate the chat real quick. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What were you saying you were gonna do? Loot. I'm about to be in this room. Okay. So, once you go in there, you can roll investigation. Okay. What I find. <laughs> yes. I am multitasking here. Uh, so, as you're looking through the room, you're going to see pretty standard equipment for a dormitory. You're going to see kind of this crappily made bed that's, you know, little sheet on it. It's got a couple stains. Looks like, you know, hasn't been cleaned in a good long time. <clears throat> kind of like if you stayed at a Red Roof Inn. Uh, right. Nightside table, you see a small candle that is lit with a... Just a cup of mead still halfway filled. 
at the floor are t a pair of boots fit for a dwarf. Kind of ragged. You see some scorch marks along the side of it. Okay. With that, I basically decide that, yeah, the rest of these dorms are probably the same. Not really interested. Of course. <laughs> I just heard my dog throw up. <laughs> awesome. What a sound. So Aramo will right. be back in a moment. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, I'm going to walk over to where the two scared-looking people were standing. Just in case they're still standing there invisible, and I say, "Thanks." Uh, if you need anything? It's like, let us know. Bye. Fallon, I want you to roll Arcano real quick for me. Eighteen. So as you go to talk to them your eyes start to surge with magic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I want to go move. And, uh, no, it like, yeah. Yep. Loud noise. Way to fuck up. But you start to see the shimmering images of these two Duogar still holding each other. Very scared. You can see they're, you know, for for dwarves, they're fairly young. They're probably 16, 17. And just got constricted to work for a really evil, creepy dude. So, they reach out their hand and hand you a small note on it. And oh, with that, they me. go away. It's, it's a language that you've seen before, but you cannot directly make out what it says. Does anyone know Dwarvish? Nope. Nope. Ariel, do you know Dwarvish? Fuck! Oh, um, God. Me as DM is going to remind Aramel technically he has the ritual spell comprehend languages. I was just about to say, I was trying to see if I had comprehend languages. I was like, where is it? So, with that, I will take the 10 minutes necessary to ritual and hold this note in front of me and just stare at it. Your eyes blur and then they turn into words. Yep. If you ever played Skyrim, it's the scene where you have to walk around, gather all the moths so you can read the Elder Scroll. Yeah, that's You're right. Like a moth priest. So, Aramel, you can read the words, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to roll an insight check for me. Okay. Fantastic. As you are reading the letter, you first I'm going to read it, and then I'll tell you what you kind of see and feel about it. Okay? Okay. So this letter looks quickly written, almost like they did it right before they handed it to you. Hmm. It said, we've been too afraid to leave, and I think they'll still try to kill us. The only way we know we can get out of here. Sorry, a chat just came across the screen. It completely threw me off. The only way we can get out of here is if we know the Zardarok is dead and we may li leave with our queen. Oh. Do I <clears throat> see, see their shimmery bodies there? You, you do not. You can. You can't really see the bodies anymore. Uh, you're assuming that they moved away because you've seen like the dust where their feet was has shifted. But okay. Aramel, you kind of feel like while they were writing this, 
that they work for the female Duogar that you propositioned upstairs. Yeah. So I walk back in one of the rooms. Which room did you go in? This one or this one? Left or right? She didn't go in a room. They were standing oh. in front of their rooms. All right. Well, I'm just going to talk to them then. Just tell them. Do you speak common? Airmail, go ahead and roll Arcana. Okay. Oh my god. Cool. Okay. So, as you are trying to talk to this space, you are 100% confident that they are there. <laughs> but everyone else in the room can tell that nothing is there anymore. You see the dust start to like fly right through the area that you are just preaching to at the moment I'm just gonna put my hand on his shoulder and be like they're they're not there anymore <clears throat> hold on I wanted him to actually try saying more <laughs> <sighs> not anymore no not God, damn it. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be over here leaning against the wall just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna tell them like well it seems we have basically people to free so, I don't know about you guys, and I tell them what the note said, and I very simply say, like, we're not leaving here until Zordarok's dead. So, or I'm not. I, I I'm not leaving them. We're going to kill Zordarok and essentially free these people, at least some of them, apparently, of his, whatever this oppression is that, that, that seems to have them terrified to even leave. I mean, I feel like if we can get some to fight on our side, we might have the advantage here. Fair enough. If they were still here, I was going to ask them if they wanted to fight with us, but they're gone. Yep. I want to speak to the grumpy older one who's in this room that Xylena's not in yet. Here, let me move out of your way. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I give a little simple knock. Teamwork. So I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna move you back from the door so he comes out. Yep. Puts his war axe just right in his hand, slings it over, and he's ready in case you actually start something. He goes, "What do you want?" I show him empty hands and I simply say, "I understand you guys are not here of your own free will, and I wish to help." by removing the problem. And I basically just give him like the raised eyebrows like. And I simply say like, do you know where the problem is right now? What the fuck do you mean problem? And I just like wisp, I literally like, not even whisper, I just say to him, Zordarok, where the hell is he? Like, we know you guys don't like him. We don't like him. All of a sudden, and you see him concerned. reach his hand up to you and cover your mouth. Which for him is like him stretching up to get it, because he's still a dwarf. Yeah, I'm a high elf, so I'm pretty freaking tall. <laughs> You're a half high elf. No, I'm high elf. I'm oh, yeah, not half elf. I thought you were a half elf. All right, my nope, bad. I stuck the player's handbook on my stuff. Lame. All right, so... Lame. <laughs> still, he covers your mouth, just enough to get you to stop. He goes... Okay. And he just whispers into your ear. And Zylina, you are close enough to hear this. Ooh. Will you quiet your fucking hole? Grandolfo will not be happy if her deal gets blown up because you can't keep your mouth shut. Understood. I, I move his hand and I to give like a signal saying like basically like Thumbs up. Understand completely. Okay. He's like the Fonz um, just goes, hey. <laughs> basically, yeah. Like, gotcha. Okay. Then I just I say to him, like, okay. yeah, and be like, where? If you can help us, we can stop the problem. Unless my queen orders me, I shall not. But Zordarok is quite a big pain in our ass. Your queen is not... 
how do I how do I say this without I whisper into his ear basically, your queen is not actually interested in that deal. She is working for the safety of her people. If we could remove the threat, safety wouldn't be an issue. Roll for persuasion. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right. I didn't lie. <laughs> I, I didn't do a deception check. I know. I'm just being clear. I didn't lie about a damn thing. I know. Well, technically, she said she doesn't care if it goes through or not. Right. But... She said if you do it. She basically put a silent hit out on his kids and him. So, <laughs> you know. I think we can piece together some information off of that. As he looks at you, seen fresh Stuagar blood across your armor and weapons. About this time, Zordarok starts to admire the forge. He should be by himself. Just don't awaken the archers. They've had quite a bit to drink tonight. I have a request of you. Yes. Two choices. We would love some assistance in this fight. You and anyone loyal to your queen would be very helpful. My queen gave us strict orders. I cannot reveal her her true goal until I am certain Zodrak will die. Then the other option. How about you grab two people who are loyal to your queen and go relieve the archers of their shift? Maybe tell them that they should head home so that when we go down there considering there are that no they archers speak considering of. that they live here going home is not quite the option it would give us time we could strike while he's alone and there'd be no chance of archers waking up the there archers, wouldn't even be archers are passed out night. drunk <clears throat> how about this we can work together on this. How would you feel about taking this knife and I hand him like one of my two daggers and set it in his hand and going to cut the cords on all their crossbows? For my safety. I shall see how you deal with Zordarok. Should I deem it necessary, I may. Okay. We shall see. And just to be clear, um, because I'm a high elf and, you know, I get my, my original equipment is from high elf type places. I want to say the dagger I just gave him has no special properties, but is elegant as fuck. <laughs> so it is a gift, essentially, that I would like him to understand, like, this is a valuable little item. It's not special in any way, but. So as you hand that... over this dagger, you see, like, he sees the hilt have elegant elven runes carved down it none of the magical just very pretty silver lane you yep. see gold oh. artwork start to craft up through the blade part of the dagger absolutely he sees it kind of tucks it in his belt grabs his belt and just goes <clears throat> We may meet again. And he just stumbles back into his room. I just whisper as he as he goes to show his door, I hope so. And I just start walking with my party. And say, all right, guys, where the hell do we go next? <clears throat> what did he have to say? Um, I gave him one of my daggers and asked him to cut the cords on the crossbows for the archers. And he, if I'm honest, didn't really give me a straight answer. So, 
I mean, I have a feeling since I, you know, killed some of the friends right there that uh, mm -hmm. it might not be as helpful as he says. I think but. the bigger possibility is that it might be that he realizes that his friends are in danger from one, us, and two, everyone else involved here. While Zardarok still lives. Once Zardarok's dead, they're free to just leave. So. Did he tell you where we can find Zardarok? He did say he would be by the forge right now. Hmm. So. Perhaps we should go find him. I think so. All right. <clears throat> we are downstairs. How do we get to the forge? There it is. <laughs> you You go with Shelby. <laughs> Yep. All, All right. right. So we I would like everyone to roll a perception check. Mm. Oh. Wow. I I right. <laughs> Found. What did you roll? I rolled a one plus three. Oh. All right. Hold on. Good job. As you start to approach this chamber, you notice a dim light coming from a long metal stand. Fallon, you just see the anvils close to this dim light. Ormic, Aramel, and Xylena. You all see that this dim light is coming from a stream of molten metal that is constantly being kept hot hot enough that it is not starting to diminish its bright emberish burn you look around and notice nothing too out of place but and i just need one person so you can decide who it is amongst yourself to roll a d20 one. Is there any modifier? Just roll a d20. I'm just going to do it. All right. Boom. <clears throat> but as you look, Aramil, you notice that all the archers are completely passed out. None mm -hmm. notice the noise, even though you're not trying to stealth or anything, which probably would have been smart, because you don't know if these guys would have actually been awake. Right, right. You've only been screwed over like three times since you got into this castle, but... I feel like that, that very personal conversation me and What's-His-Face had were it's pretty straightforward, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, Ormick and Fallon, what you start to hear in the background is you hear someone kind of fidgeting with crafter's tools, talking to himself. Oh, I must do my evening prayer. See that my lady is off before my dear toy returns. As you look a little bit further, you notice that there is one Dulagar left alone in this chamber. <clears throat> off by this big metal container where the hot liquid metal is coming from. With that. Where you guys go from here is up to you. I want to sneak. Is he facing the hot liquid metal? He's kind of like tucked into his own stuff, trying to get his tools into a bag. Okay. I'm going to fourth level dimension door. Oh, shit. Over wow. Here. That works. Yeah. Um, I was going to try to stealth over and drop kick him into the metal. <laughs> but all right, that works too. So Fallon just pops up. No, she is behind the machine, and Zodorok does not have the best passive perception. So he does not notice this magic surge. Okay. I'm slowly going to follow her now. Yep, I'm just working my way over. Um, 
I want to stay out of the general light of the lava, if I can help it. At least not within his view. All of a sudden, you start to hear a little bit of chuckling. <laughs> that feeling that you feel like you might actually be caught. He just goes, picks up this hammer and goes, oh, I've been wondering where you went. Oh, Tucks it into his bag. You feel that little clench from your butthole when you're really like afraid of getting caught. It just looks <laughs> okay, yeah. like, All bit. like shit. So I, I'm going to cast at third level lightning bolt, and he needs to make a deck save. Alright. And I'm gonna move in to I'm not gonna move moving. She started casting. All right. I will wait. What is the DC I gotta be? Fifteen. As you're channeling this mighty force of nature in your hands, you just tuck from around the corner of this machine and cast this. Without knowing in advance, he gets smacked right in the back with it. He Go failed? On. He failed. <clears throat> he gets uh, 30 lightning damage. <laughs> well, that's a good way to start our demise. <laughs> yep. With that, then... he... Uh, Wait, do I get sneak attack damage? I mean, you didn't say it prior to, so no. Ah. Oh. I can't make this encounter too easy for you. I mean, I'm clearly sneaking up on him. You didn't roll for stealth once. Okay. That's accurate. <laughs> but going into this, he whips around and has his spiked gauntlet on the opposite hand from what the bodyguard had. But as you see, this dark energy cloud is kind of like all around it. You, the Frost Maiden told me about you, but I'm not alone. With that, he summons up these two dark clouds to come out and animate two bodies that were hidden in the dark. As you look a little closer, you see the bodies of Coventrader and AAA alongside him. But he's so old. Can't you just leave him alone? Oh, you see, like, his skin is cracked and it has, like, red energy pulsing in there. Their eyes both glow with red pulsing energy. And the cloud of energy that leads to these creatures are still tied to his gauntlet. But with that, everyone roll for initiative. I mean, hey, y'all, I just did 30 fucking damage on him, so that's got to be a good chunk. <laughs> uh, I eighteen. Nice. All right. Roll the same initiative again. Yep. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> yes, you did. Wow. What are the odds? All right. Just so everyone at home, turn order Sorry. over in the screen. There we go. So with that, Zaylina is actually going to have the first strike. <clears throat> And because he is in range, oh, I do love loud noises, don't you? Oh, we're gonna cast shatter on there. 
All right, so I have to make a constitution saving throw or I take half damage. Now, does Shatter have a splash effect? It's 10 feet. It, it's 10 feet from the point of impact, right? Yeah. All right, so where are you casting that? <laughs> right here. Killing it. Okay. So let me go ahead and do... Where is... There he is. And that is a con save. Con. With a epic failure of a six. Not a, not a nat one. So good. He takes his blunt force to him and just goes... He feels leather strips actually strip off from his chest <clears throat> and takes all 19 of that thunder damage. Fuck it. Damn. We've already done some really good damage on him. Zalina, are you done? Yep, that's it. That's all I got. I'm, I'm trying to stay a distance from this man. All right. Ormek. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, run forward. Four, two, five. We'll stop right there. Um, and as I pass by uh, Fallon, I'm going to uh, say, like, way to go, and he's bolstering magic. And for the next 10 minutes, she can roll a D3 whenever making an attack roll or an ability check and add the number to her D20. Hell yeah. There you go. And that is my turn. With that, oh, Fallon. Add a D3 to any what? You can add a D3 whenever you're making an attack roll or an ability check and add the number to your roll D20. And please tell me before you roll it that you're going to use yes. it. Do I only get one? No, it's, uh, no, I don't know. It doesn't say that. It's just the creature can roll a D3 whenever making an attack roll. Or okay, an cool. Check. So I can just use it, so. Um, Okay. I'm. Ooh, hold on. What does this fucking staff do? A lot. Let me just. Let me just, <laughs> let me just this bitch. Um, five. Ooh. ooh. <clears throat> Bruh. <laughs> like, Bruh. Wait, hold on. If I pop out here. I do. Okay, DM question. DM answer. If there was um, 120 feet long lightning uh, that was five feet wide, if I attacked him like this, it wouldn't hit anybody but him, right? Correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. What just happened also, with the cameras? Another question. Oh, Kevin turned off his camera. Cool. Good job. Yeah, yeah now everyone's out of place. Um, if I use one of these things from my staff, does it count as my action, or do I need to do an actual action as well? What do you think, Aramel? Wait, say, say, the, say that question again. If I use one of the perks of this staff, does that count as my action, or do I get to do that plus an action? Does it say in the description as an action? It, has, it says it says it also has the following additional properties. When one of these properties is used, it can be used at dawn. Doesn't say action anywhere. Lightning strike. You can use that. an action to cause a bolt of lightning to leap from here. Thunder. Oh, when okay. you hit a melee attack using your staff, thunderclap. Mm -hmm. You can use an action to cause. Okay. So then, yeah, it would just be this. Then. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use light. Oh, I gotta write that down. Um. Lightning. Break. 
Okay, um, he needs to make a DC constitution saving throw. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dexterity throw. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm freaking the wrong one. You're good. Roll for damage. Okay. Please hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> wow. But I'm a tiefling, so all those ones are actually twos. So that's three ones. So that's an additional three plus an additional two because it's a lightning spell. So that's 34. 34, yeah. 34 points of damage. Oh. He was dealt over almost 60. Yes, yeah, over 60 damage in the past two turns. And the first one wasn't even a turn. It's just. Well, that's true. That is true. Yeah. True. yeah. I've been keeping track of all the damage we've done on him so far just to see how high is. Just this, I'm just curious. Yeah, right. All right. So is that ending your turn? Um, I'm gonna. Um. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Uh, I'm gonna pop back in here. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need partial for, cover. Just for some partial coverage. <laughs> all right. Aramel. With sadness in my eyes, seeing my friends dead. I step forward to Zardarok, aiming myself in a way that will push him directly into the, the molten metal. And just look directly at him and say, you really shouldn't have brought my friends into this. And I cast Thunderwind at the fourth level. Oh. All right. Wow. By hitting my drum, like straight up, just like a boom. Can it be heard by like three, three hundred feet? Yep. I don't care. Yeah. I want him in the molten metal. I mean, yeah, but that's that a is sacrifice of all of us. <laughs> if when uh, he's dead, they will all back down. They have nothing after that. So if you're using thunderclap, co is Coven? No, he's using thunder wave. Yep, Cove and Triple A are both in there. I understand right. the risk. But they're dead. Wow. Hold on. Roll the phone. I only have so many tabs I can keep open. Yeah, right. That's... I roll the one plus three. It's a crit fail. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> He didn't do much better. Nope. But Zordorok did pass his saving throw. And yeah. not only did he pass it, he natural 20 did. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, no, like I had the dice up here. Do you want me to show you? No, we believe you. So does he only take half damage or he doesn't take any? It's pretty much a DM decision on that one. I, I'm going to take some damage because that is a fourth level spell. Yeah. And it's going to be a quarter damage of the full. So like seven? Yeah. And he doesn't push back either, right? Correct. Nope. Correct. Yeah. Pissed. Quite pissed. I also just realized in the turn order that all five of us go in a row and then all three of them go in a row. Oh, yeah. So, Aramel, is I'm that your really, turn? Uh, I really hoping. Um, and then I begin to play a jaunty tune on my drum as I inspire uh, Oramek. Because counting, he will be within range on his next turn. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> 
All right. So with that, it is Zordarok's turn. After just getting the absolute shit beat out of him <laughs> before he could actually even get one turn off. Yep. I mean, holy shit, guys. Really? <laughs> Yeah. I'm waiting to see what you're going to do back. That's the scary part here. Uh, he is going if to... If anyone's getting hit, it's me. I've done over 60 damage to him. He's being behind the machine. machine. You have the benefit of being hidden. <laughs> oh, he's moving. He moving retreats away. back onto a platform. Oh, no. When he raises up his gauntlet, and you see just this pulsating dark energy start to come from it. And he is going to cast two Eldritch Blasts. At Aramil. Oh, oh shit. Oh boy. Zylina, get ready. Eight. And what is your AC, my friend? Sixteen. That's uh, doing that thing again, damn it. Hold on. Aw. So you're going to feel these two blasts, you're gonna get hit and kind of take the wind out of you you are going to take a total of 14 force damage mm. that's way better than I thought it was going to be Yeah, I thought you, yeah, you started with the 4 and I was like it's going to be like 40 something 48 <laughs> damage <laughs> dead No. See, I, not to break immersion too much but my maximum is 45 so that would have been really bad eh I need this blanket on me for the weight because I'm stressed, but I get get I'm too hot right now because I'm stressed. <laughs> but with that, it is, with it is Triple A's turn. Uh oh. And Zordarok raises his gauntlet, and ha right after he casts the blast, the form starts to shift forward right up to Aramel. You see the dark visage of your friend, cracks in the skin. It looks like hell. This body has literally gone through hell. You would be doing it a favor to kill it. But as it strikes down... Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus. I'm just Jesus! No, so as it strikes down... It is going to use one of its level one spell slots. Well, that's gonna smite me. And smite you. All right, let's do it. All right, hold on one second. I still gotta roll for damage because that is freaking on a different screen on here. This is one-handed. Just click the pink thing on the chat. Yeah. I don't know if your guys' is pink, but yeah. It's pink. So yeah. it is one-handed, yeah. but Jesus. it will be dealing... Eh, Divine Smite only did two. So grand total, right. as it pulls down, instead of this radiant godly energy coming down at this sword, you see the same mist coming from Zord of Scotland envelop this blade, mm -hmm. crashing down on you, dealing 13 damage. Jesus. Coven Trader <clears throat> looking worse than a 200 year old Tiefling would. He's 201. He finally <laughs> looks his age. He pulls out this book. Oh, no. And as he starts to look at it, he is going to cast Fireball at the fourth level. And he, oh. will, and he will be casting it right here. So right at hey, Aramic and Fallon. I get advantage on deck saves. Heck yeah. <laughs> yep. Hopefully this not my advantage actually works for my benefit. Am I... Do I need to make a deck save? You do need yeah. to make a deck oh, save. Oh, 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 this is an ability check, right? Yep, yep. I'm going to use... I'm going to add that D3. All right. Oh, man. Oh, not 
Oh, I'm horrible. Okay, what? um, let me roll. I rolled a 17, but let me, uh... <laughs> Wow. Alright. Plus two. So I rolled a 19. So, <clears throat> Fallon, you are still gonna get hit by the cinders. Avoiding 32, but you are gonna take 16 damage. Okay, I can do that. Ormic. Seeing this yeah. gigantic ball of fire coming basically right at your face, you skirt back and actually wield your axe and try to push it off away from you and Fallon. You will only be taking... Well, let's do eight damage. All right, that's fair. Zylena. Let's see how fast we can do this round, guys. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> I don't like having to think. <laughs> have you guys realized it's anytime I have to think, I'm like, ah. Oh, perfect. Within range, so I will cast Thank you. Is that your turn? That's my turn. That's it. That's all I got. Or a mech. <clears throat> all right. So we're going to just use my uh, full range of motion here. And and probably put myself in harm's way, but um, but we're also going to enter their rage because you know I feel like it's only you know necessary that I do so. Boss fight time. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, uh, sorry, the D eight. I don't even remember that. Ooh. A three. So what do I get? An intangible spirit, which looks like a from a pixie, appears within five feet of one creature of your choice that you can see within thirty feet of you. At the end of your turn, the spirit explodes, and each creature within five feet of it must succeed a dex saving throw or take 1d6 force damage. Until your rage ends, you can use effect again, summoning another spirit on each of your turns as a bonus action. Tweet. So, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, plant that guy right here. All right. Uh, and I'm going to use my inspiration here to make my two attacks against... Uh, Triple A, but uh, I want to say I don't know whether or not to add it to whether or not I'm going to hit him. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do on the, the attack roll for the first swing. Okay. Didn't be, but okay. Should have done damage. All right. So. The first roll. I was adding plus three to the twenty-four, so to make sure I hit. Gotcha. So I, yeah, but it, yeah. As I, then I saw it, and I was like, "Well, that's a hit." <laughs> so Triple A is going to feel the axe come down, bypasses all of her heavy armor, and as you pull your axe back, you notice something peculiar. There's no blood on the axe. Oh boy. Um, well, that's my turn, but fuck. <laughs> Wait, did the thing explode? Oh, right, that is true. The thing needs to explode. Uh, so that spirit explodes. They both their deck saving throw, which I think is only 12. Let me verify. Watch that loud surge. DC throws 13. It's one, what did say, 1d6? Yeah, 1d6. Go ahead and roll the 1d6. Coventry gotcha. did successfully dodge the attack. <clears throat> Zordarok, with a 2, <laughs> is going to take 3 damage. Fallon. Um, I'm going to pop out. <laughs> 
and I'm gonna hit good old Z uh, <laughs> with a level three lightning bolt. He needs to make a deck save. All right. Oh god damn it. Uh oh. Okay. Eighteen. Fuck. Okay, hold on, I need to see if he takes half damage. <laughs> uh, lightning strike, yes. Okay, cool. So he takes that's twenty six because those ones are two, so that's twenty eight, and then plus two because it's lightning, so half of thirty. So he takes fifteen damage. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And then I'm a pop back in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> probably safe because I'm probably about to get fucking wrecked. Aramil. So I move over to the right to get a good look Wait, at hard rock. You were in front of AAA? Yes, I was. He gets attack Aww. of opportunity on you. Oh, we're actually doing that now? Okay. I said if you know if you can get away with it, why not? But all right, all right. So he is going to come at you with the longsword. Jesus. He doesn't hit. Fourteen. Oh, shit. I'm seeing yeah, double rolls over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah you had two of your chat. Yeah, t yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. But I think it's because I have two of the windows open right now. But I'm taking whatever one rolls first. Okay. Yeah, because on my end it showed 25, but apparently yeah, on your end it showed 14. So I'm sitting here like, what the hell? Yeah, what? <laughs> no, you're perfectly fine. So as AAA goes to strike down, you are able to easily dodge out of the way of her blade. <clears throat> so I basically tuck and roll 10 feet to the right, or I guess my left at that point, and cast Shatter at third level at Zardarok. That's really unfortunate damage for a third level spell. That is. Yes, it is. All right, Khan, which is the only redeeming quality this guy's got. He rolled a nine. Holy crap. Take that. My goodness. Yeah. And also, Cuff gets hit by it for, you know, because he's in the 10 feet. Yep. Is that your turn? That is my turn. So next up is Zordorok. Wait, did Cub pass or fail? He failed. Okay. We're at 110 damage right now on Zordorok, yo. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at Zordorok right now, he his armor is in tattered. His dark, demented crown is cracked and starting to fall off his head. His braided hair, which held everything back, away from the metal work he did started to come loose his eyes start to glow purple no no and with that he actually goes running forward oh boy and he is going to attack with his spiked gauntlet so he gets multi-attack with the spiked gauntlet. And because he's in his psychic conquest mode, he will be doing an extra 1d10 damage with every melee attack. Oh. God damn it. I'm actually going to have to do math. I might be like shoving. Give me a minute, y'all. <laughs> like, hold on. <laughs> Get my calculator out. 18, 12, 17. You are going to feel this psychic energy permeate you as he strikes into your skin. You will be taking 32 damage. Are you up? The Aramel or Aramel? No, Derek is uh 
Derek is down. That's because I have exactly Did you? 32 health. So let's let's immerse. Um, I am. I basically grab the weapon that I'm hit with and just feel it enter, and then I just slowly pass out. <clears throat> As Aramel's body hits the ground unconscious, you see the purple light in Zonrock's eyes glow bright. Oh, fuck. I'm just going to look over at Zylena and like try to make eye contact with her. <laughs> well, that's actually where we're going to leave it for the week. Oh, fuck! <laughs> fuck. Sorry, guys, it's time. Uh, Can't with, do that, this. with that, don't forget to check out Fallon Shop. The link is actually in our page, Sherbert Creations. Um, right now, she's got a Black Friday sale, so different sale every single day. Every single day till Sunday. Yep. And we did already announce, but since Oramek is actually finally here, we will have a new player starting after the new year. His loving wife, Miss Alicia. Uh -huh. Or as Fallon says... <laughs> Boobs. Boobs. We also just shared uh, your page, Shelby, on Facebook as well. I actually got a notification. <laughs> um, with that, don't forget to stop by next week. Hang out with us while we go through Horde of the Dragon Queen with Aramil. All right. Yeah. With that, everyone, have a good night and see you soon. Bye.